So we begin in the name of God, who loves us into being, of the eternal word, whose life speaks us into freedom, and the spirit who moves us into holiness. Amen. 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 The healing peace of Jesus, the abundant love of God, and the constant companionship of the Holy Spirit is with you. And with you. And with you. We come together tonight from different places around the globe and different places on our spiritual journey. Some of us are longing for the Eucharist and cannot wait to get back to the traditional Mass. While others have found new ways of worshiping, filling that void until we can return to the Eucharist, perhaps transformed by our current longings, Future Church offers us a sacred space to listen, pray, and reflect on the liturgy. Wherever you are geographically and on your spiritual journey, I invite you to join this sacred space tonight as we celebrate the future of church now. Tonight, we celebrate the Ascension, as Russ said earlier. Um, I saw a meme on Facebook the other day, and I'd like to share that image with you. The Ascension represents the day when Jesus began working from home. And I think we can all relate to that as we all work from home these days. The messages in the readings invite us to our own ascension, our rising to be Christ in the world. In the first reading from Acts, Luke tells us that before promising the Holy Spirit, Jesus reminds us of our baptism with water. I would like to invite you to consider your baptism and what that means to you now. In baptism, we were anointed as a royal priesthood. Think about that for a moment. A royal priesthood. Of course, I was always told it was a little P priest, not a capital P priest. Nevertheless, if we are to take this anointing at baptism seriously, then we are to take the commissioning in the readings today just as seriously. In the second reading, Paul assures us that the God our, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, will give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and enlighten the eye of our heart. As Jesus ascends into heaven, he invites us to ascend to a new life with Christ, commissioning us with the Holy Spirit as our guide. Jesus, is, Jesus promises us as his disciples all of the power of heaven and earth. This scares me a little because with great power comes great responsibility. We are being called, even in this time of pandemic, to serve and be with the poor and marginalized, to love as Jesus loved, and to bring Christ to the ends of the earth. That's no small task. Whenever we are, wherever we are in the world or in our spiritual journey, let us listen to the word tonight, calling to mind how we are being called to service, to see with eyes of our hearts, and to continue the work of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Ever-present and loving God, we cast our cares on you because you care for us. Enfold us with your presence and fill us once more with holy awe that by the mystery of the ascension, we may be, we may be sustained in hope. Empower us by constant outpouring of your Holy Spirit that we the body of Christ may live and work together, bearing witness to all you desire for us and for creation. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus, who lives and thrives with you, with us all, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now let us listen to the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. He presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered, appearing to them 40 during 40 days and speaking about the reign of God. On one occasion, he told them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of God about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, the disciples asked Jesus, Rabbi, are you at this time going to restore the sovereignty of Israel? Jesus replied, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that God has decided, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Having said this, Jesus was lifted up in a cloud before their eyes and taken from their sight. They were still gazing up to the heavens when two messengers dressed in white stood before them. They said, you Galileans, why are you standing there looking up at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of God. Thanks be to God. The response is, Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. People everywhere, clap your hands. Shout to God with a joyful voice, for God most holy is awe-inspiring, the great ruler of all the earth. Alleluia. 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 God ascends the throne with a shout, with trumpet blasts. Sing praise to God, sing praise. Sing praise to our ruler. Sing praise. Alleluia. 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 For God rules over all the earth. Sing praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon a throne of holiness. Alleluia. 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 Our second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Sisters and brothers, may the God of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the God of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation to bring you to a rich knowledge of the Creator. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened that you may see the hope this call holds for you, the promised glories that God's holy ones will inherit and the infinitely great power that is exercised for us who believe. You can tell this from the strength of God's power at work in Jesus, the power used to raise Christ from the dead and to seat Christ in heaven at God's right hand. Far above every sovereignty, authority, power, or dominion, and above any other name that can be named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And God has put all things under Christ's feet and gave Christ as head over all things to the church, which is the body of Christ, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of God. Thanks be Thanks to God. Be A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of Abba, God, and of the only begotten, and of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The good news of our salvation. Thanks be to God. Praise Praise to you, Christ. O Christ. The recording of this reflection is at a time when the coronavirus pandemic has gripped our country and our world, causing immense hardship and great fear. In such a context, how do the readings for the Feast of Jesus' Ascension console us and encourage us to respond as his friends and disciples? In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, after his resurrection, Jesus gathered the eleven apostles and reminded them of all they had seen and heard as they journeyed over their three years together. For example, the wedding feast at Cana, calming the storms at sea, the healing of Peter's mother-in-law, the multiplication of the loaves and fishes. The apostles were all present with Jesus on these occasions. Jesus commissioned the apostles and each one of us to continue the work they had done together. Jesus spoke to the apostles of their baptism of water, reminding them of John at the River Jordan. Jesus purposely mentioned this as baptism unites us together as a community of believers. The apostles persistently questioned Jesus, not really sure of what to make of his statements. They certainly were not comprehending the reality of the moment. Jesus assured them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Yet, they continued to be hesitant of just what was really happening. In the letter to the Ephesians, the author speaks of seeing with eyes of the heart. What does that mean? What does that mean for us? Maybe the eyes of the heart could refer to seeing life situations through the eyes of faith. Perhaps it is denoting a glimpse of the Spirit of God in ourselves. God is revealed to us through our deepest longings, our dreams, and our hopes. Perhaps the eyes of the heart signifies believing the unconditional and eternal love God has for each and every one of us. The existing thread we see and hear, God is always with us, God will not leave us orphaned. To quote the little prince, it is only with the heart that one can see rightly. What is essential is invisible to the eye. Matthew's Gospel takes us to the heart of today's feast. It describes the 11 apostles gathered with Jesus, just as he did at the beginning of his ministry. Jesus clearly calls each of his apostles to go forth and continue his mission. Jesus formed a community of believers, a community of service. Jesus' life has come full circle. Jesus came to earth as a helpless infant he grew and lived life to the full. Jesus established a circle of friends, Joseph and his mother Mary, the apostles, Mary Magdalene, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus, Nathaniel, Zacchaeus, the centurion, and countless others. Jesus helped the poor, 
Jesus heals the sick. Jesus welcomes the marginalized. The Feast of the Ascension commemorates Jesus' time to go back to God, his Abba, where he will remain in glory. This feast speaks so directly to each one of us amid these uncertain and frightening times. We are called like the apostles. We are being sent forth to open our hearts to Jesus, to stand, serve, and be with the poor among us, to welcome the marginalized, to help the sick, to forgive one another. Simply put, to love as Jesus, to make our world a dwelling as envisioned by Jesus, united with another in love. Most importantly, Jesus let us know in no uncertain words that he will send the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us. Jesus promises not to leave us, for he will be with us all day, every day, until we meet face to face in heaven. So together, let us pray for the gift of hope that we may be able to meet the challenges of each day with love, with courage, with conviction. Generous God, fill our hearts. nourished by God's word and strengthened by this community let us pray together loving God holy one mm. your desire is for our wholeness and well-being we hold in tenderness and prayer the collective suffering of our world at this time we grieve precious lives lost and vulnerable lives threatened. We ache for ourselves and our neighbors standing before an uncertain future. We pray, may love not fear go viral. Inspire our leaders to discern and choose wisely, aligned with the common good. Help us to practice physical distancing revealing to us new and creative ways to hold each other fast so we may care for each other in tender solidarity. Call us to profound trust in your faithful presence. You, the God who does not abandon. You, the Holy One, breathing within us, breathing among us, breathing around us, in our beautiful yet wounded world. And may the God of hope fill us with every comfort and joy in believing. May the peace of Christ abound in our hearts and minds and may the Holy Spirit gift and guide us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our time of prayer and reflection has ended, and we go forth to be Christ's witnesses to all the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.